Hi, I'm Rick. Hi, I'm Oscar. Rick, we're going to talk about YARP. 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 What's YARP? Well, let's dive into my screen because uh, we have some slides over there. Um, it's YARP. It's not the guy that says YARP in Hot Fuzz, right? Uh, therefore, my YARP. That's, yeah, you know the, the guy that says YARP, but this is yet another reverse proxy. Mm -hmm. And actually, YARP has been um, published by Microsoft somewhere late last year. It was the uh, initial release, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but in the end, the biggest question is then, if we have this as a separate tool, then what is a reverse proxy, right? Mm -hmm. Because what does it do? Well, let's have a look at that first. So a reverse proxy listens to incoming HTTP requests, and it forwards those requests to the appropriate servers mm -hmm. um, based on the contents of the request. So you could have, for instance, the order part of your website going to server A, because mm -hmm. that has the ordering part of the application, while the um, search part goes to a completely different server mm -hmm. that actually hosts the search. In the end, like service. all modern, especially like microservices based uh, applications or sites, um, you want to pull stuff apart, but you need one pane where your visitor goes yeah. uh, and it should be transparent for them. That is normally your first proxy. Yeah. You also see like ingress controllers in uh, Kubernetes, for yeah. instance. Um, that's an example of a reverse proxy. And it's they're everywhere. Yes, also, they the front-end frameworks are running them. Yep. Um, so, why YARP? What is, what is YARP? Why yet another one? <laughs> no, <laughs> well, it's yet another reverse proxy. Well, this one uh, at least is, is different than uh, a normal router, for instance, because mm -hmm. this actually works on, um, on layer 7, which means that it works based on HTTP fields, mm -hmm. so it knows what's happening on that level. Um, and you, I'm going to go back into your question why uh, uh, why this one, why yet another, uh, in a while, because I do want to explain first that a, a reverse proxy also handles the HTTP connection from the client and then it creates its own connections to the destination server. Mm -hmm. And on both ends it can work with uh, connection pooling, um, which then means that it's actually the spider in the web controlling whatever happens uh, around HTTP. Now, the advantages of a reverse proxy is that your URL is independent of the implementation. Mm -hmm. And also, you could have multiple systems uh, making up your ecosystem of applications, let's call it that, um, and have your reverse proxy in place to direct traffic where it needs to go. So it can forward calls to backend servers that actually perform the real work, and uh, you can load balance off of them. But you can also do stuff like offloading TLS encryption or caching or compression, and having that all take place on your reverse proxy instead of each and every system have, having to do that by itself. Yeah, I've seen um, reverse proxies being used um, also for systems that are not reachable from the internet, but to actually make a gateway to them. Yeah. Um, I've used them in migration scenarios yeah, where yeah. the original site was running. First thing we did, it took over the domain, put a reverse proxy in front of it, and then peeled out new functionality from another API and just start exposing them. I think also things like API management is a form of reverse proxy. I think so too, but, um, but that's, that's of course targeted at specific uh, services, mm -hmm. API or re uh, REST services or WCF, or so it can do all of those. Um, yeah. This is actually for all HTTP traffic. Yeah, and this is based on the ASP net stack that we know, right? If you say so. Well, this, this is this is part of the the .NET ecosystem. Yes, yes, that it's um, yeah. It's it's developed by the same team as the uh, yeah. ASP .NET. And then the cool thing is, if we dive into the demo, I mean, you, I think you also work kinda with a reverse proxy in one of your uh, um, yeah well, assignments. Multiple, um, but uh, we are using, for instance, uh, well, one of one of the projects I'm doing, using online and doing. Um, front door service? Yep. Well, that is a reverse proxy. It is, in yep. end. Um, locally, we used to um, to debug locally to, because we have a micro a microservices system. Um, we're not doing uh, containers. We're doing all, all like towards web apps and stuff. Sort of stuff. Yeah. And what we did is is make a local replica with uh, actually using a reverse proxy to have the path based mapping and it's like oh I want to debug this API and we just switch it. Yeah. Um, hook up to your Visual Studio and you, that load goes there, the rest goes to the implemented system because you don't want to run like 15 Visual Studios to no. get your uh, system up and running. And that's where reverse proxies can come in handy. Now, the cool thing about YARP, as far as I'm concerned, and let's dive into Visual Studio, is 
And of course, this is Visual Studio uh, 2022 with uh, C Sharp 6, oh, sorry, with .NET 6, which means we don't need anything anymore. Oh, top level statements, everything is yeah. done. Yeah, let me make it just a little bit bigger. Here we can see that um, I actually pulled in a NuGet package. So that's the cool thing about YARP. It's available as a NuGet package. So right there, it says yarp.reverseproxy. And as you can see, it's version 1.0.0. So it's the first release. You include this um, as a package into your project. And we can go builder.services.addreverseproxy. And I, in this case, tell it to get the configuration for the reverse proxy from mm -hmm. uh, a configuration setting or yeah, a, because it needs to know it's like this is incoming traffic it will host that but what to do with it yeah where, where, where do we need to go like, yeah <laughs> and then of course you can have all types of uh, configuration where you say if this is an in the url then we need to go there and if this is in mm -hmm. the url we need to go there that's what you specify in the configuration and then just like you would map controllers or endpoints you mm -hmm. can also map reverse proxy and run your application and then we're good to go yeah it's just the middleware that you plug in there if we get any request because yeah it's everything there's no path specifically no. Um, it will use that configuration to guide the traffic in this true case. now if we look at the configuration that we actually have available um, there's this part that's actually reverse proxy specific mm -hmm. and in this case just to make stuff clear i say let's go catch all uh, and catch all, everything, the information goes to, in this case, HTTP bin.org. Mm -hmm. uh, which means we are defining a cluster ID right here where we want to go mm -hmm. for incoming traffic. And then here we define the cluster and it has a destination of an address being HTTP bin.org. Now this means that running this application locally, I would get an endpoint where I go to and then I should see what HTTP bin gives mm -hmm. me. Also, one extra addition, we have a URLs uh, line of configuration up here. This does not um, automatically tell your ASP.NET application where to run. This is you specifying this reverse proxy should run on port 5000 for HTTP traffic mm -hmm. and 5001 for HTTPS. If you want to make sure that your, actual, your actual ASP.NET application that is a reverse proxy runs there, of course, you will have to mm -hmm. change that here. But it needs to match that up so that it can replace the proper headers from the headers coming in from the back pane yeah, to replace and that you it. Don't get uh, weird cores errors or other because messages. otherwise your 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 next click would be HTTP uh, bin again. Yeah. Okay. So now it maps that to the correct uh, URLs where we're actually running, and that would mean that if I run this now, so I added a NuGet package, I added three lines of code. Sure, save that uh, solution for me. Um, I don't care, just override it for me. Okay, sure. I'll bite. I'll stop once and then start again. Save that down, run that again. Normally I work with Visual Studio Code, so I didn't have a solution file there. And now it wanted to override it for me. And then running this, it already goes to port 5001 over HTTPS. And we can see that yeah, we're now on HTTP start with bin. Your local host, but yeah. it's actually not your local host. It hosts everything that's behind there. True. So if I now go to, I would like to see uh, what is up with um, running an actual request. I can even see all of the headers coming in. Everything is uh, transmitted over, an, uh, over the line, or at least as if it was running on localhost. Mm -hmm. So this way you can also map different types of addresses to different types of machines and it all looks like it's under one system. And that's yet another reverse proxy that actually enables you to build that for yourself really fast. That is um, very cool to see this that transparently here. Um, where do you see this going next? Like are there more, um, um, more places where we could implement this. I definitely see the, the local debug version like the one I'm using. Yeah. Um, for instance, uh, in App Service, Azure App Service, what it default does for you is also use kind of this technology um, with slot uh, swapping and stuff, gives you load balancer if you scale out. But you could build your own load balancer like this. Yes, you could. And you could put some ruling in there or regional. Um, and, and somehow I have the feeling 
that there's a reason why Microsoft implemented a reverse proxy or, or a new version of something that is a reverse proxy. Because, of course, you had ARR, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of dated. It's kind of dated. I think uh, the package hasn't been updated in 10 years almost. Yeah. You need to install it with the web installer. And um, I'm still using it with one or two projects. I think, um, I think we all are. Yeah. And um, maybe even some so of us don't, knowing. Even, <laughs> don't even know that we use it. But Definitely. I, can, I can imagine that this is... Uh, the setup for maybe a new way of working with re reverse proxies. Well, we definitely saw all the effort going in when ASP.NET started with uh, Kestrel being pulled in and making that super efficient. Yeah. And um, if we are in cloud needing multiple of the, these solutions, so making something really efficient here, uh, I can imagine uh, it will pay off. Yeah, and the cool thing is that YARP already supports HTTP2. Mm -hmm. They are testing with HTTP3. If I uh, look at the GitHub repo, uh, they say it looks like all scenarios are working, but they are still doing some more extensive testing to make sure that there's uh, no wrinkles anywhere, or if they are, then they even them out. So this might also bring us to the next level of um, reverse proxies and who knows where the journey yeah, with uh, YARP will end. Definitely check out like what are you using now, um, uh, what we homebrewed for this, because yeah. you can do a uh, HTTP client one way and, uh, it, and yeah. know some things. Um, this is, looks pretty simple. Uh, it's for straightforward most and you should be able to go from the start. Cool. Thanks, Rick. Well, thank you. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, make sure to check out our Discord. You can go there. Most of us are on there. You could ask us questions or just come in and chat. See you there. See you next time. Bye. Bye.